Hello, welcome to Let's Get Down to Business with the Prince Rupert and District Chamber of Commerce. We are here to give a voice to our local business owners, entrepreneurs, and community leaders to strengthen and support our local business community and to share the wisdom and experience of longtime business leaders and the fresh ideas and experiences of new entrepreneurs. So let's get down to business. Hi, my name is Daphne Thompson, and I'm the president of the Prince Rupert and Dis District Chamber of Commerce. Today, I have the utmost privilege to speaking to Veronica Stewart from the city of Prince Rupert here on Let's Get Down to Business. Welcome, Veronica. Hi, Daphne. Thank you for having us. So tell us a little bit about you. How, how did you get to Prince Rupert? So I'm actually from Prince Rupert. I am a third generation Rupertite. Um, I moved away for about 10 years to go to school in Vancouver. And then family ended up bringing me back around 2012. And I've been here now for a decade, which is crazy because I feel like I just got here and blinked and time has flown by. That's how majority of the people's stories were. It's like either they, they got here and they just got stuck and never left or they come back and it's like time just flies. Yeah. And how did you end up um, working for the city of Prince Rupert? So I actually worked for Metlakatla when I first got here for two years, or maybe three years almost, in a similar role. So I was the communications manager there. And then a role opened up for this with the city. And, and I just thought it would be an opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about local government and what be involved in kind of the action that was happening in local government. And I have a degree in political science as well. So, you know, it just kind of fit with the things that I care about and my interests. Um, yeah, so I'm just happy to to be here and to be able to kind of give back to my home community. Well, we spoke a little bit earlier about that giving back, specifically how the city of Prince Rupert is trying to give back to our business community. Um, you told me a little bit about the downtown incentives that there are. Well, can you delve a little bit deeper? Sure. So we have a revitalization tax exemption program in place that's been in place for about a year, but hasn't seen as much uptick as we would like. So we definitely want to kind of put that out to the community that it's available to, to folks. Um, so essentially new buildings and renovations that are over a value of 50000 can apply for a, between a five and 10 year tax exemption, depending on whether it's a new build completely or if it's a renovation to an existing building. And so that um, can means that if you, you know, you're successful in your application for a tax exemption, that there would be a no tax increase uh, applied to the non-market increase in the value of your building. Um, and so we also have some other incentives available in the downtown area as well. So we also have a facade improvement program where businesses can apply to up to $5,000 or 50%. Uh, of the cost of their facade improvement. And so that's already fully subscribed for 2022, which is great to see. Um, anybody who's interested in learning a little bit more about that can talk to our economic development officer, Paul Venditelli. Uh, we always have a lot of interest from business in that. So uh, when, when things open up, we really encourage people to reach out right away. <laughs> so we'll yeah, but those, those are two of our main programs, just in terms of like the downtown business area and, and incentives that we have available. Does, will that also continue in 2023, the facade improvement? So it's based on a funding regime through Northern Development Initiative Trust, and we apply for the grant every year to do the program. As far as we know, they're continuing to offer the program, and so it should be uh, opening up again in, I think it opens either February or March of 2023. And it's just a simple process of literally just applying yeah, there's an application form and all that process is laid out on the city's website. So there's a bit of a description of what that application process looks like and, you know, what it specifically qualifies because it is for exterior, not interior improvements. And it kind of goes through what the details are. Obviously, you know, you've got to get your building permits and your development permits and make things uh, make sure that things are according to the different guidelines that we have for the downtown core. But um, yeah, that money is available for people to make improvements and, and lots of businesses have taken advantage of it. It's been great. So this year we have the Argosy taking advantage of it. I think um, Eagles Bluff B&B has gotten a new sign. We've done the Niska Hall sign in the past. There's been a number of businesses that have really, yeah, taken advantage of those funds. And, and I think it's helped to kind of slowly improve frontages in the downtown core. And it's, it's really great to see. Oh, it definitely does. And it makes our downtown a little bit prettier. Yes. And who doesn't want that? We definitely do. I know personally living in a town that is 
kind of rainy and gray sometimes it's great to see like new pops of color and vibrancy in downtown because you know you gotta have some contrast to that rain definitely definitely and the tax exemptions um how does one apply for those so there is an application form um, on the city's website. And so uh, anybody who is interested in applying and is a bit maybe confused about what that looks like or what may or may not qualify, please contact our economic development office and, and we can touch base with you about how to go through that process. But the first step is just reaching out and we can kind of help guide you through what that looks like and, and whether or not you qualify. I mean, it's it's fairly low barrier, I think, in terms of, you know, if you're doing big renovations, you're very likely to qualify. So like I said, we just really encourage people to to look at that program and incentive because it's, yeah, it's pretty fulsome. And you also told me a little bit more about um, some entrepreneurial uh, activities that the city is taking on. Um, please, please elaborate more and tell us what that looks like and why is that so unique? Sure. So, I mean, as many people who have been in Prince Rupert for a long time would probably know, the city became the unwilling owner of Watson Island in 2009. So there was uh, formerly a pulp mill on that site. And for a long time, it sat vacant. And it was a pretty big environmental liability and hazard for our community. It will cost us $90,000 in holding costs in like 2013, 2014, when um, the latest iteration of council came on side so it was quite an expense and it it again was was a danger for the community because of all the pulping chemicals so something that the city eventually decided to do was to take down the pulp mill um and and to repurpose the site for for industrial use again and that's something that council was very supportive of senior staff doing and it, it took a lot of work and remediative work and actually the city is now up for a brownfield redevelopment award which is pretty exciting because of the all of the work that went into it and the kind of unique process that we went through with the province to remediate the site area by area all that is to say is that the city um through its development corporation was able to remediate the site and now has a new propane facility on the site as well as a few propane supporting industries and that's something that not all municipalities do it's definitely outside of the scope of normal municipal activities but we were really looking for new diverse ways of getting revenue on site because you know we do know that we don't want to increase the tax burden mm. Uh, as much as we can anyways on any other like commercial and residential taxpayers so this is an opportunity for us to both collect new tax revenue on Watson Island and also to uh, get lease revenues to our development corporation which then we dividend out to the community for big projects so that's helped support you know things like the replacement of our 100 year old dam and um, repaving projects and other things like that so um, yeah it's it's exciting to see it's definitely like I said outside of the scope of what municipalities usually do and has taken kind of an entrepreneurial spirit from us and and but it's exciting to be a part of and it's just great to see that site being put to use again and that it's no longer like an environmental potential danger to the community. I love that the city um, also takes the lead and actually shows by example what can be done when you do take action. And when you do think outside the box and when you actually do step out into something that was probably very scary and something that was probably completely against the old way of doing things. So forward thinking, um, breaking new ground, um, thinking about sustainability in a different, in a different way. Um, I love that the city is truly making that an example and leading the way for other entrepreneurs to follow that type of thinking. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, and I really have to give props to the people that I work with who put a lot of effort and time into it. I mean, council was very supportive of senior staff, but we, you know, we had Richard Pucci, our director of operations, and Paul Venditelli, our economic development officer, and Corinne Bombin, who kind of oversaw the financial things. And they all put a lot of time and work into kind of kind of seeing that through. And we have other communities that now also have former pulp mills that are being decommissioned or maybe need to be de decommissioned. Mm -hmm. They're coming to us and asking for advice on like, how do we go forward? So yeah, that's a, it's a great story and kind of turn. It's a great, point, I it's think, a great case study and showing mm -hmm. that um, Prince Rupert is on the map for not just our amazing port, but quite a bit of other aspects and things that we do do in this area because we are so 
almost secluded and we we are in a very unique environment that gives well creativity a different name and a different way so. that yeah. I think it's awesome um it just it excites me and it, it really makes me passionate more about this community especially the business community when the city itself also starts thinking of different ways on how to aid and become sustainable yeah, I, I think so. I think when we were doing our rebranding campaign, one of the things that one of the people that we chatted to as part of our interview process said that they said people get real in Rupert. And I kind of love that as a bit of a slogan, because, you know, sometimes you are in the rain and you are at the kind of what's considered the end of the line yeah. um, in terms of amenities and things. So people do sometimes have to be a bit more creative in how they accomplish things. And we do have to be a bit more resilient and band together. And I think that as a community, that's something that we do pretty well. And it's something that we can all collectively be proud of. Definitely. One of the other creative aspects that the city is helping with is the attraction and retention programs to get more talent into town. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So that's something that we know from having business walks in the community um, that we partner with the chamber on, actually, and with Community Features, the province and the Port of Prince Rupert. Um, is that labor attraction or retention is a real challenge for our community businesses. Like across the board, it's always, especially lately, the number mm -hmm. one issue that they're having. And so um, the port and the city as part of the redesign Rupert process and, and our industrial partners um, that were also part of that process all partnered together to work on an attraction and retention campaign. So it's called Make Prince Rupert Home. Businesses uh, that are local can post their job postings on the website and that website and a Make Prince Rupert Home campaign that kind of highlights the benefits of Prince Rupert is pushed out uh, throughout Canada and specifically to places like Alberta that may have seen downturns in their particular industrial economies that are, you know, we're looking for those potential workers to come to Prince Rupert. Um, so there's some targeted markets there uh, and that's something that's a free asset that the community can use. So we really encourage businesses to use it and even local people as well can look on that website as a job board and you know see what opportunities might be available to them. How does a business get part of that or how if I'm now the business owner, how do I get my open positions on there? So there's a portal where businesses can actually register to be a part of it. Um, I do think that the, so the port had a particular staff person who is looking over it uh, and I think that person has now left but if you contact either myself or if you contact the Port of Prince Rupert about that uh, website you should be able to register I mean I think I think there's a registration portal like on the site itself and it should be fairly simple but if you have any issues feel free to reach out to any of us and we'll at least be able to point you in the right direction for, for somebody to contact. Great part of that um program I know is housing is a massive issue so even if we do get the talent and where are they going to stay um the city I know I've got some programs in place of that um what are there so in 2021 the city adopted a number of housing strategic actions and so basically in this intervening period we've been following up on those housing actions so one of the main things was to put a number of city lots up for sale so that included both small kind of like single family lots but also large scale uh lots that are you know for more multifamily development potentially and so the city's been kind of doing a lot of outreach and connecting with developers throughout the province to try to bring them to prince rupert make them understand the local uh, conditions and to really encourage them to develop here because we do have such high de housing demand that you know there is potential market opportunity here. And so we really are working to highlight that. And we do have interest right now um, in a few different areas in the community. And so hopefully we'll be able to share that with the residents soon, as soon as we you know get any potential contracts lined up. But things are looking promising on that front. Um, something else that the city is doing is we have a housing needs assessment currently underway. And so uh, moving forward, if the city decides to proceed with any kind of affordable housing development or, or supporting a funding application of a developer for something like that, because there's some rapid housing funding coming online shortly, um, then that needs assessment will help to inform that process as well. So we are making sure that we're targeting the different markets that are really in need in Prince Rupert. So we're trying to attract things like market housing, but we're also knowing that non-market and affordable housing is something that Prince Rupert definitely also needs. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, there were a number of housing um, incentives in terms of like waiving of development fees that happened um, 
over the last couple of years. And then they were just recently renewed again at the last council meeting on Monday. So that looks like if you're applying to put a new unit in your house or applying to build a new housing development, then we are waiving for another year uh, building permit fees and development fees. So that's another additional kind of cost saving that we're trying to um, put online to encourage people to develop new housing. That's that's very, very good. Um, I heard about another incentive that if you do have, for example, a, a basement that is fully furnished and revamped and all done, and you rent that out, that also has an incentive to it in order to increase additional um, occupancy? Don't, if there's something, oh, I mean, only if you're adding a new unit. So if okay. you, yeah. So, so if basically, it's if you, a brand new unit that you're adding, then. Yeah. So if you have a house and you, there's no unit in it right now, and you added a unit to it, then then those fees anyways would be waived, the development and the building permit fees. However, if you're just renovating a house that you already live in, that's not making any more housing. So that's not going to be eligible for development and building permit fee waivers. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. No, no, no problem. And it was previously. So for a while there, we were also just encouraging renovations in general when we first yeah. put the program online. And so anybody applying for a building or development permit would have the fees waived. Council recently passed it so that it's just if you're creating a new unit. So it's specifically housing that we're targeting now for the development um, and building permit fee waivers. Well, that will definitely assist in creating more housing, which will help with attracting more talent and retaining them in our beautiful town. Yes, definitely. I mean, the city itself, like we have challenges sometimes filling roles, even though I think it's a great place to work. <laughs> um, <laughs> But a lot of that is often the housing issue, right? People move here and they find that the housing is insufficient to house their entire family and their family is still somewhere else and then they can't bring their family in because they can't find a big enough house that's affordable. And so these things are definitely something that the city is feeling acutely as much as everybody else in the community. And we know that it's important and, and council has given us a lot of direction to be able to you know, push those lots out for sale, have these incentive programs in place and really try to get development moving and off the ground in Prince Rupert. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've spoken quite a bit about all our different incentives and the programs that the city do have for all of our businesses. The um, the downtown tax incentives and the, the facade incentives, the industrial um, areas that you've turned into a, a little bit of a business there to help the community as well, as well as now all the attraction and retention programs. What is the, the one thing that you would be able to leave our business community with, to inspire them and to, to help them be more prosperous in our business community? I would say to take advantage of every potential incentive program that you can, if you have the capacity to take advantage of it, right? Like these programs are in place right now, they might not always be in place and they're they're great and they give you an opportunity to really like reinvest in what, what the exterior of your building is, for instance. And so, yeah, we just really encourage people to, to take advantage of what programs we have available. And if you see something in another community that you think is a good idea and maybe we should have that in Prince Rupert you know reach out to the city we are open to hearing from folks about how we can improve um, and that's something that we do through our business walks we have great conversations with businesses during that process but you know we're open all year round to, to listen to folks and, and to hear from you. I love that I do agree um, it, it is a collaborative effort to make the city of Prince Rupert a booming economy and a amazing place to live. So the city is providing amazing programs. Our businesses are there to take advantage of it. And together, this brings an uptrend to our business and our economic development within the city. Definitely. I mean, we just went through a massive visioning process with the 2030 vision that we finished in 20, 2019. And, you know, obviously 2020 threw us for a little bit of a loop, I think yeah. collectively, but the city has still been progressing on different aspects of that vision. But a major component of the vision was, hey, we have to do all of this together. Like partnership is really how we're gonna get it done because no one organization has the capacity or finances to be able to do it all together at once. So um, yeah, just to be able to realize what Prince Rupert's potential is, that's definitely something that's gonna have to be a collective effort 
and but it's exciting and, and it's an exciting time to be in Prince Rupert and I'm happy to be even one tiny little part of trying to make things better. Me too. I find it super exciting. And I think we are in such a unique place that we have so much opportunity. And yes, it comes with challenges, but the reward is so much greater. I, I am super passionate about everything that the city is doing, as well as all the other programs that are out there in order to uplift our business community. So thank you, Veronica, for being on. Let's get down to business and sharing more of this information. It was great having you. No problem at all. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me as well. So my name is Daphne Thompson, and I'd love to see you next time on Let's Get Down to Business. Thank you for listening to the Let's Get Down to Business with the Prince Rupert and District Chamber of Commerce. If you would like to be featured as a guest on a future episode, please email us at rupertchamber at gmail.com or direct message us on Facebook or Instagram at Prince Rupert Chamber.